Peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back, Market Review, Wednesday, December 22nd. I'm your host, MJ the Mastermind. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. All right, got some, you know, we're going to start doing a lot more content this upcoming year. You know, a lot more digestible videos, shorter videos, you know, quick tips and things like that. So definitely hit that notification bell. Uh, started off with our affirmation of the day. Today's affirmation is I am blessed and I am a blessing to others. I am blessed and I am a blessing to others. So write it down, say it out loud, you know, speak it into existence. All right. All right. Um, oh, we got a masterclass. Thank you for the masterclass today for the mastermind group. Um, Lori's going to be teaching the class. Um, so if you're not a part of the mastermind group yet, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. You know, tons of value in there. Um, amazing conversations, amazing, uh, amazing group. So make sure y'all tap in, get your 14 day free trial. So that Let's class is just specific to TMG, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. And legacy words for sure. For sure. Um, Let's jump into the market. Let's take a look at this price action. Um, so actually, before we do that, let's, let's go back to, you know, let me bring this up. Let's look back at Monday. Let's kind of go through the whole week. We got a shorter week this week. Uh, so Monday, we had that strong drop. Let me clear, clean this up a little bit. Let's remove that 50 day. Monday, we had that strong drop, um, had a nice bounce. You know, we had this level uh, going into this week. You know, I said that we're probably going to, I didn't think we were going to pull back this much, um, but I, I said that we probably weren't going to, you know, break 4,500. I didn't see that happening, um, but we ended up coming down uh, to 4,520 and you know, we kind of bounced off this level that we had. Um, you know, if you go back, this is an old resistance level. Going back to, you know, um, the, the August and September, the end of August and September peak. Hold on. Yeah, going back to uh, August and September's peak. So you can see resistance turning into support right here at this level which is around that 45, around 45.30, right? Um, and then you see here, we had a, you know, we had a nice daily demand here, but let's go to the weekly, right? So we created this weekly demand, um, you know, earlier this month, right? So that was, you know, for me, that was a strong indication that, you know, there was a strong amount of buyers here at this level. It was a strong, you know, strong indication that there's buyers at this level. Not only did we create a weekly, um, we created a, uh, we actually broke this daily, you know, and then we created a, a daily demand on Tuesday, the Tuesday's price action. Now you can see that there was a lot of buy pressure on uh, on Monday, right? I believe, can't go back, but I believe the buy, you know, the buying of this candle, because um, we talk about the 50% rule, there was more than 50% buyers on this pushback, right? So that was a strong indication that buyers were, you know, fighting back for control in addition to this hammer, you know, this hammer candle. Right. Now on Monday, you know, there was a lot of things going on with the Omicron. Um, you know, a lot of uncertainty in the market. Um, in addition to that, you know, Goldman Sachs um, on Monday, Goldman Sachs cut U.S. U.S. GDP forecast after uh, Manchin, you know, uh, took a step back um, on the Biden bill, right? On the bill back better. 
So, you know, the market kind of was reacting to that. And also, you know, the risk of the variant. Now going into Tuesday, you know, um, kind of like a buy the dip situation. You know, the market was very, very strong. You don't, don't see any sell pressure at all, basically on Tuesday. And the market, you know, strong rebound as you know, some of those virus, you know, variant concerns kind of faded. Um, and then also, you know, today, um, you know, uh, third quarter GDP, we got third quarter GB, GDP numbers, those increased as well. You know, showing, showing some strength in the economy and that was above the estimates. So, you know, the market looks, you know, pretty strong right now. You know, we got in past the Fed meeting. The market has digested that. Um, you know, kind of gotten past that initial shock of the variant. And you can see very, very strong price action today. Um, you know, the SPY, SPY was performing well today. But, you know, I predicted all-time highs by this week. Uh, it looks like we could be getting there by, you know, you know, the market's closed Friday. Um, we got a short day tomorrow. I believe, I believe the market closes at two tomorrow, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it looks like we're on our way up. We might not, we we'll probably hit supply, probably hits 4,700 tomorrow. Um, and as you can see, this supply zone is definitely a lot weaker now, now that we've tested it multiple times. We have multiple tests in the supply. So the wall of orders that may have been sitting here, you know, um, you know, buyers have been taking a chunk out, you know, over these last few tests. Right? So I'm not expecting such a strong projection of sellers, you know, as we come up into supply, but there still might be some selling there, um, you know, just because the algorithms are going to, you know, sell where it makes sense. And, you know, it makes sense to sell in supply. Uh, but, you know, I still think that we could, we could close, right? What's our, what's our closing high? Uh, our closing high is 4704, 4704.75, right? Uh, so I think we could maybe get there, get there tomorrow. Right and have a um, you know closing high, right? You know our high high was uh you know I believe last week where we tested forty seven forty three, but we didn't close. And so we're able to close above forty seven oh four point seven five. You know that'll put us at you know all time high close. Right. Let's jump into some of these stocks, but definitely shout out to Aki and Norval for holding it down Monday and Tuesday. You know um, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all value that y'all, you know, y'all provided to the people. So appreciate that. Anytime. Just want to give you your flowers, you know, for calling out uh, this pop. It was gonna have this week. So gotta give you your respect. I no doubt, man. I mean, you know, you know, the drop happened. The drop happened like you expected. Uh, but then we, we kind of started to bounce back up. So you know, um, it kind of played out, kind of played out just as you expected. I know you expected us to go a little bit lower, but, you know, that drop that you had called definitely happened. So, you know, I'll give you your flowers as well. VIX is back under 20. I'm loving it. VIX is back under 20. We closed right at the 200 day. So we'll see if we can actually, you Let's know, see about this, huh? if we can actually um you know because you know the, the 200 day for those that don't know that's the purple dotted line on my charts let me get rid of the 100 uh, so you can see the 200 days been acting as support you know over the last few days you know ever since we broke above it it was resistance here came back down broke above it came back tested it then we had that strong move up Right, and it's been acting as support, right? 
Um, so we'll have to see, you know, hopefully tomorrow we can continue lower and, um, you know, close below that, that 200 day. All right, that'll be a great sign, you know, going into next week. All right. Yeah, that'll be a great sign going into the next week. See if we can close the year all time high, that would be great. Um, we're getting into that Santa rally period, which is typically the last week of the year in the first couple of days of January. Um, you know, so we still could see more of a strong move up. I think 4,800, I don't know, no, I don't think 48, yeah, actually 4,800 is possible by next week, I think. Um, I think that's very possible. And then, you know, going into the new year, like I said, is, you know. So I did call gold. Gold looks like it is bouncing out. Um, like I've kind of been expecting because, um, you know, it's, it's a great hedge, but it has been moving slow. So I, I wouldn't, ex I would expect maybe some more money to flow into gold. Um, for asset managers to hedge their risk. It looks like we have a nice break, retest, and you know, strong bullish engulfing here on the daily. Um, so just keep your eyes out on gold over the next couple of months. We did break break above 1800, um, like I expected. You know, after that strong move, we had a nice move down. Um, but after that, you can see that huge pin bar, uh, nice hammer. And then we started to move back up. A nice break retest and this could be setting up here um, for gold so just keep your eyes out on that let's look at the 10 year you know 10 years kind of been just trading under that 200 day um, you know you know 200 days kind of acting as resistance right now on that on that 10 year So, you know, the bond market really doesn't look that attractive, like I've been saying. Real yields are still, still negative due to inflation. Um, so, you know, you know, the market looks pretty good for equities right now. Um, and, you know, we forecasted about uh, three to 4% growth GDP this upcoming year. So, you know, I think the market is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty prime for equities to rally um, until we start getting closer to summer when tapering starts to end, and we're looking at rate hikes. Uh, ES VIX ten year. Uh, let's look at oil real quick. Let's get an overall market look. So oil, nice cup and handle here. Looks like it's getting ready to you know, break back out, uh, looking at these last couple of days here. Uh, could be closing the week with a bullish engulfing on the weekly back to back. So you can see we came back, tested this weekly demand. You know, oil had a huge run, you know, earlier this year and then kind of, you know, kind of came back down into demand and we started to move back up. So just something to watch. So it looks like it could be setting up here. Nice to H base um, here as well. All right. Now let's look at, you know, some of our top movers of the day. All right. So, you know, Apple, Apple got another price hike today um, to 200 from Citigroup. All right, so we've seen an increasing amount of analysts, you know, you know, if you look at the last, what, six, six uh, target raises, all of which in December, we, it looks like we didn't get any analysts, you know, upgrades or downgrades in November. But ever since, you know, the month started, it looks like all 200 and above, looks like KeyBank initiated at 191, um, but all you know, all looking at 200 for this upcoming year. And they're stating that, you know, the new products like the, the glasses isn't priced in right as of yet, right? Which makes sense. Cause it's, I think 
Apple is targeting like the second half, third quarter, fourth quarter, it would make sense. It would make sense that they release it third quarter. So it goes into the fourth quarter earnings. Um, you know, that's why they typically release the iPhone in September. Um, so we could probably look at like a third quarter release, maybe for the glasses. And then, you know, that, you know, that probably catapulting them into a fourth quarter record revenue. Um, along with iPhone sales, probably get a new iPhone 14, you know, the cycle iPhone 14 next September. Um, but yeah, you know, analysts are saying that's not priced in yet, which makes sense because it's so, so far away and we haven't really gotten any concrete details on that. But, but that would put us at, let's say, Apple closes the year at 180, um, 200. Um, 200 would only be a 11% increase, you know, which Apple could do in its sleep. Um, so we'll probably, we'll probably see 200 by, um, it will probably see 200, if not by, you know, first quarter, um, before correction time, we'll probably see 200 by summer. You know, kind of like what Apple did this year it was very, it was kind of chilled out, you know, until we hit summer, until June, and then started to rally up. I think we might get some, get something similar next year. We get a, we'll get a, probably get a nice pullback slash correction first quarter. Then as we go into rate hikes, get another, um, another pullback correction. And then, you know, um, I think once that initial shock from rate hikes wears off, I think the market will continue to rally. Um, let's look at portfolio visualizer real quick. Let's see Apple CAGR to give a better estimate. All right, so Apple's a 24% compound annual growth rate. See, we end the year at, uh, see, we end the year at 180. That will put us at about a rough estimate of at least, you know, 220 going into, you know, by end of, by end of, you know, next year, which I think is, you know, very, very, you know, possible. Um, but we saw Apple shares continuing to rise today, you know, along with the overall market and, you know, that price target. Let's look at... Oh, of course, we got to look at Tesla. You know, Tesla rallying. Um, close the gap, right? You know, we were kind of expecting it to come back and close the gap, which it did um, almost perfectly. I right? came back and closed the gap. You know, had that huge run. We had this gap here since, uh, you know, since October, since the end of October. You know, we had some demand, we bounced out of demand a couple of times, and then eventually we came back to close the gap. You know, yesterday's hammer candle was probably some indication that we were gonna move, you know, strongly today. Nice gap up and a strong move, you know, strong move by Tesla. Um, I think Elon is rounding up his sales. I think he's just about finished up. Um, but looks like we're gonna close the week with a three candle on the weekly on Tesla. So this could be setting up uh, for another breakout here soon. And it even looks like we're in this, you know, this pattern here, uh, which looks like a, a wedge slash bull flag. It looks like it could be setting up for another strong move here, right? especially with this three candle with the, on the weekly. Um, another indicator that you can use too, uh, you know, I spoke about the EMAs, but, you know, a lot of times you'll see, you know, the stock find support around a 20 EMA on the weekly too, kind of like what Tesla did. And I believe uh, if you look at the SPY, it's clear to SPY out. Uh, you'll see that on the weekly, you know, um, the 20 EMA is uh, respected. Now you can use um, for the spy, you can use the 100 day as well since it's an ETF. Uh, but you can see, you know, the 20 EMA on the weekly, 
you know, disrespect, right? And you can see here, even on that pullback in September, you can see we never closed below the 20 EMA uh, on a weekly here. And then we came down, we almost tested it to a penny a couple of weeks ago, but then you can see here, you know, this week we came down, tested it and bounced back up as well. Um, so it's just another tool you could add to the toolbox on that weekly time frame. Let's look at, you know, some of these other companies. So we had paychecks, um, Xilinx. You know, Xilinx has been moving. Uh, some people are expecting this merger to close very, very soon. So that could, you know, be a catalyst for AMD this upcoming year as well. You know, Xilinx is a huge player in the data center. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of different components, adapters and things that they sell that a lot of companies use. Let's go to the daily. And then another thing you can look at too, when the nine, when these EMAs get really tight and they're trading very close to each other, um, you know, that, that, that means that we're, we're squeezing. That means that price is squeezing and it's probably gonna be a strong move here soon. Sort of like a basin period that we've been talking about. You know, that basin period that we've been talking about. Now, if we go look at this, this is a very nice bull flag forming here on Xilinx. Very nice bull flag. We had a nice drop base. You know, the base was on Monday. We closed at 196. And this would have been a really nice trade for the week. Closed at 196 and then we're back up to 215 right now. All right. So looks like that that could be getting ready to, you know, go back up to test all time highs. And I'm sure after that merger closes, uh, you know, AMD and Xilinx. Let's actually put them side by side real quick. These charts look very similar. So if we go to the daily, let's go to the daily. So you can see, you know, these stocks look very similar in the way that, they, that they've been trading. And we all know that we're expecting a merger or acquisition, um, you know, with them. You know, both, both look like they're forming some bull flags here and getting ready to, you know, to make a move. And I, lo I love how AMD broke out and then it came back to retest, right, before continuing back up, right? I think we could get a better entry over the next two months. So just be patient if you missed out, you know, as, we, as these are trading, you know, very, very high above, you know, um, you know, above the 200 day. Look at, you know, look at this perfect entry on AMD in, uh, in July, right off the 200 day, right off the 200 day. Never look back in that $85 test. Imagine if you would have, huh. let's actually look at that real quick. Let's, let's do a, um, let's do a back test. Let's do an AMD. Let's do a uh, let's do a think back. I just want to see this. You know, if you would have bought on that two hundred day, July nineteenth, MJ, I just I just wanted to uh, also you uh, give you your flowers on that that hundred day moving average on the spot. Oh yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a you know that ETF hundred day strategy, you know, that's a, that's definitely one everybody should be looking at, you know, going into the new year looking for entries. Sean Bro Quill, um, me and him was in the lab and did some back testing and came up with that. 
Um, I know some people use the 50 day, um, but I found that the 100 day, you know, uh, it's a little bit more effective. But yeah, you know, the spy off the 100 day, you know, is, is, is very promising. You know, even if you go back and back test that. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, Aki. So let's say you bought. So let's go back. AMD was trading around 85. Let's say you bought 100. You know, you could have bought a leap. You know, I just like to do the shorter term to see the profit potential. But let's say you bought a 100 when AMD was at 85. Let's say this was July. Let's say, you know, you bought like a January 22. So you gave yourself about, you know, six months. Um, so let's look at the 100. At that time, the 100 was going for about five bucks. Going for about five bucks. Let's go back to the chart. AMD hit a high, what, November 30th? You go back to let's let's go to uh, let's go to November thirtieth. So this this ten x, all right. So you ended up more than ten x, more than a thousand percent. So you pay four eighty five for this contract. This contract went the profit was fifty four hundred on that contract just off the two hundred day. And I don't know if y'all saw my video I did a couple of months ago where I back tested the strategy, the 200 day strategy, and the portfolio did 400% in a year. Just, you know, just buying um, one year out or more contracts um, when, when the stock's at the 200 day. And that portfolio did over 400%. So don't sleep on that. Uh, but what a crazy move, what a crazy, you know, potential profit on this uh amd yeah xly bounced off the 100 day i'm just checking the chat i wasn't looking at it uh yes yeah, look at xy yeah i think that was a good entry uh mj for that 200 day I mean for that 100 day i'm bad Oh, uh, on XLY? Yeah. I mean, if people was looking for an entry. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, <laughs> what a beautiful bounce here. Uh, and, it, and, you know, it was a couple different confirmations here, right? Because, you know, we came back into demand, right? We had, you know, we had back, you know, we had stacked demands here. here. I stacked the mins, came back, you know, very nice doji. Can't, can't get any cleaner than that right off that 100 day. And then look at our last two days. And that was a great entry, um, you know, after this head and shoulders here. Yeah, very nice entry on, on XLY here. I'm still waiting for XLK. I want XLK to test that 160. So just be patient. Um, I think we'll get it maybe first quarter, um, but I could be wrong, um, but that's what I'm waiting for. I have a limit set uh, for XLK for January 24th, but I wanted to come back to test, you know, I want resistance to turn into support, you know, at this level here, um, you can see at 160 was resistance. That break, we never fully came back to retest and you can see our 100 days right around that right around that, um, that 160 as well. All right, so, you know, Xilinx, Tesla, some of our top movers in the S&P. Um, let's look at the NASDAQ. Or actually, let's look at our top losers. See where that, where that money is moving. So Moderna, Oracle, uh, Facebook, um, I don't know why, I think Facebook has some news today. Uh, let me double check that. 
and the spy is still running after hours. Um, I'm still in my spy calls for those that care. Yo, MJ. Yo. With that, with that hundred day strategy with XLY, you wanna know what, what makes it an easy strategy? Let's just say you enter into a two year leap with XLY and then it pulls back to the 200 day, you can always average down at the 200 day. So that's like the easiest strategy to kind of like get started. Enter at the 100 day, average down at the 200 day, and keep it moving. Yeah, you could do that with all the all the all the parents. To, to be honest, I did this with uh, SMH, you know, and you know that contract is up 100. percent But I bought here, I bought as soon as it tested the 100 day, dipped a little bit, but I got a 24. So you know, I think my drawdown was maybe like five to 10 percent, nothing nothing major. Um, and then look at this run up on SMH and you can see it tests it multiple times. It's not like, you know, boom, you know, boom, you know, uh, you know, it tested it here. It, it went down a little bit, but you would have been right back to the price you got in within a few days, right? Another test, another test, Right. And then, you know, this is this is where I entered on this move down here. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, implement that strategy. And if it works, you know, let me know at me uh, at me and Quill. Let us know, you know, how that worked. Um, but, yeah, even if we go back and look at XLY, right, we're just trying to simplify it for you all going into this new year. It's like, you know, by the grandparents at the two, at the 100. And if it keeps going lower, average down at the 200. As you can see, we got multiple tests at this 100. And you can see, you know, buyers stepping in and protecting it. Yeah, and they got to be mindful, though. When you see, like, XLK and XLY pullback or any ETF pullback to the 200-day, like, that's bear market territory. It's almost rare that you see it pull like an ETF pull under a 200 day. That's why that strategy makes sense because typically an ETF moves along the 50 day, right? So it's like, all right, cool. Once it pulls back to the 100 day, that's like cake, you know? And then the other one is ice. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Once you can even, like, if you're a patient person, you could, you can enter the ETFs at the 200 day. If you're a patient person, like for me, I like the 100 day, but if you're a patient person and you kind of want to take all the risk off the table, you can always wait for the 200 day. If you're a patient yeah. person, you're going to have to be very patient, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, for man. sure. Like, because you might wait a whole year before you get that opportunity. So the 100 day right. might, what it, what, uh, when we back tested it, MJ, what was it? XLK, XLY gave you three entries in a year at the 100 day. I could be wrong, but because that was a minute ago, but yeah, yeah but at least you might get three entries in a year. 200 days, you might only get one entry in a year, if that. Like, if you're talking about the spy, <laughs> but <laughs> that was probably a long time for it to hit the 200 day because it was running. But as far as XLK and XLY, I think it gave you multiple opportunities to get in at the, uh, at the 100 day and probably once for the 200 day. Yeah, yeah, like XLY, it was multiple opportunities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The most recent one was eight just this year. But if you're waiting for the 200 day, I mean, in in March we came close, but we didn't quite test it. Um, but you can see how many times we tested that that 100. Uh, somebody asked, what's the difference between um, EMA and SMA? Um, EMA. Um, puts more credence it the data that is collected over you know the period it um it values the most recent data uh, more than the than the sma the sma it values all the data in the period the same but the ema so if i put on an ema the sma is more conservative the ema is going to take into account like you know the most recent price action a little bit more 
So if I was to throw in a, a EMA on here, uh, let's do an exponential. Uh, let's do an exponential 100. You'll see it'll probably be a little higher. Um, right. So you can see it's a little higher than the, you know, than the estimate, right? Because of this, this nice run up. So you'll see it just, you know, if a stock runs up, like if we look at, if a stock runs up, you'll see the EMA a little bit higher than the SMA because it's, you know, it takes into account the most recent price action a little bit more. Right? But yeah, you know, definitely implement that strategy, you know, on that next correction. Um, SMH, XLK, XLY. Uh, even the SPY, if it gives you that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, even the SPY. Um, you know, that's what I did. Um, I bought the SPY here and then I bought the SPY again on Monday, right? When we came down and tested it, right? So it provides it, you know, it provides a really good entry, right? It provides a great entry uh, for those that, you know, that may not be so versed in the technicals, you know, you can kind of just simplify it. Just wait for those ETFs to pull back to the, to that level. All right. Let's look at the NASDAQ real quick. So Moderna, Peloton, Zoom, you know, some of those stocks that we've seen bounce, you know, pulling back a little bit. You know, I think um, just a just a trade for the moment. Um, we know Peloton is having a lot of issues. But Tesla, like we said, and others. Uh, let's look at SMH. SMH was moving a little bit today as well. I think SMH will eventually come back down to close this gap, right? Test that 100. Um, so just be patient, you know, look at that 280 level. But, you know, it looks like it's squeezing here too. Looks like it's squeezing. Same thing with TSM. You know, TSM has really been squeezing for quite some time now. Let me throw the 50 on here to see if, if it's a 50, uh, a golden cross watch. We on watch for a golden cross here. Looks like we just golden crossed. Um, it was this last week, so we just golden crossed on TSM. Uh, but you can see we we really been, you know, we've been in the basing period pretty much the whole year. Kind of been basing out. Now, AMD's coming out with new chips. You know, a bunch of companies are coming out with new chips. And there's only two uh, manufacturers in the world that can make, you know, five nanometer chips, right? Or lower, it's TSM and Samsung. So there's not really much competition for TSM when it comes to the manufacturing. And it looks like we're getting a three candle here, right? On TSM, so might start to see it move up um, over these next couple of weeks, but you know, um, TSM handles majority of the manufacturing um, and only other company in the world that can do what they do with Samsung. So they have, you know, a, a pretty strong moat in that sense where, you know, they're, they're one of two companies that can do what they do, right? Um, so, you know, I, I think TSM is gonna have a strong year come 2022. I think we'll start to see it uh, trend back up soon, you know, after we break out of the squeeze. I think the market's probably just a little bit concerned about Taiwan and China and um, and think, things like that. Uh, uh, so Kendra, the 100 day on the daily or weekly. So 
here's another thing that y'all can use. So if you use the, the regular SMA on Thinkorswim, if you use, if you use simple, if you use simple moving average, your, your, um, your moving average is going to change depending on what time frame you're on. All right, so let's say I do, let's make my, my SMA 100. Let's remove the 200 so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Let's remove the 200 and the 50. All right. All right. So right now they're in line, right? Because I'm on the daily. But if I switch time frames, you'll see, you, you'll get that 100 SMA on different time frames. But if you want to keep, that 100 SMA, because most times when institutions and asset managers are looking at, you know, your moving average, they're looking at it on a daily. Like when, it, when they reference the 200 day, 100 day, most times, majority of the time, they're looking at it on a daily, right? But if you want to keep that level to where it doesn't change when you switch time frames, I use the daily SMA. So there's two kind of SMAs in Thinkorswim. There's a simple SMA, there's a simple moving average, and then there's the daily SMA. Now the daily SMA doesn't change depending on what time frame you're on. So see this, this red line is my SMA based on the 15 minute. This yellow line is still my SMA based on the daily. So if you want to keep like your 200 and your 100 day, even when you switch time frames, you know use the use the daily SMA. Right, um, just something to be aware of. Right. Let's look at Qualcomm. Let's look at these chips. Let's remove this daily. Simple. Uh, you know, Qualcomm was a walk away. Um, had a really nice bounce. You know, I called it down here around 123. Uh, shit. I myself, I got out before earnings came out because I don't like rolling the dice. But you can see here, we had a really strong move out of this weekly. Really strong move out of this weekly. Broke out above supply. Looks like we're basing up here now. Um, you know, basing over these last couple of weeks. Having, having trouble, you know, holding above 180. But, you know, this is a company that's been making major moves. You know, their chips is in the Oculus. You know, their chips are in the Oculus, you know, they're entering, you know, the, I think the, the computer, the laptop space. So they're going to be competing with AMD and Intel as well. So that's definitely a company to watch over this next year. Um, you know, as they're saying that, you know, they're going to be competing with Apple and AMD, you know, straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, so they're pretty confident in their chips. Uh, so definitely a company that you want to keep an eye out on. What's up, Aki? So you just wasn't going to tell nobody about the H base on Microsoft. On the okay. daily. Yeah, Microsoft, it's been trying to, it was in this pennant. We broke, we broke below it. Um, we still didn't close the gap. But yeah. Um, what this this H here? Yeah, the H start from um the high. 11.22, and then the first base is on 12.3. Second base is on 12.17. So that moved. You, I thought you told me it's invalid if it breaks lower. It didn't break lower on, on the daily. It's, it's, it's an a, a H base in demand. You see it close on, um, on 12.17. It closed at 323.8. And I was seven move right there. Man. So what about um what day is this? Zoom is in the way. Um what 1220? Yeah, 1220. So, oh, you're saying as long as it doesn't close below the low of the pre of the first base. Correct. Got you. Right. That makes sense. Um, so yeah. 
nice H base here. Uh, you know, uh, y'all know my 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 horror story with Microsoft. I sold too early. Uh, I'm just waiting. You know, what a year though. What a year by Microsoft. Um, what is it up? Fifty two percent. 52%. What a year. Uh, hey, if you go back, I actually did a post on the cousin's Facebook on Microsoft. And this was like around uh, here. This was like September, October of last year. So, you know, everybody would tell you I've been talking about Microsoft. And the biggest <laughs> Pluton ain't even come out yet. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Their chip hasn't even come out yet. So there's still a bunch of catalysts, you know, for Microsoft moving forward. Um, so, you know, I think uh, I think Microsoft definitely goes to what three trillion um, soon, you know, over, maybe over the next year or two. Well, right now we at two point five trillion, so we might, we'll probably see three trillion this upcoming year. But yeah, you know, some of the biggest catalysts for the company haven't even been haven't even came out yet. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But yeah, nice A space on the daily. You know, nice bounce. You know, you can see those, those EMAs getting pretty tight. We'll see if we could, you know, definitely some resistance at 350. Um, but we'll see if we can, um, you know, break and hold We'll probably maybe go back up and test all time highs. Um, but we'll see if we can break and hold that. I'm waiting for another correction on it. Um, me personally, let's throw the 200 on there really quick. You know, Microsoft is a company that doesn't really test the 200. So when it does, you know, definitely pounce on it. I don't even think it's tested the 200 in the last year. Uh, I think the only time it did it was during the pandemic, right? And ever since then, it hasn't tested that 200. So whenever it does, load the boat. Because this company is going to 400 without question. All right, so you can see that 200 days right inside our demand. Um, definitely going to be targeting this level. Hopefully some terrible news comes out and the market overreacts to provide us with some great entries. But, you know, you can get that exposure through XLK too. Right. So you don't have to, you know, necessarily, you know, worry about Microsoft coming back down, you know, get that exposure when XLK provides that entry as well. And then when Microsoft finally does decide to come back, you know, to test that 200 day, um, you pounce on that. Let's look at Amazon. Amazon, this has been a year of the base. Let's go to the yearly, you know, let's clear it out. As you can see here, it's just a basing year. You know, we basing out, looks similar to, I must say, it looks similar to 2016, right? If you look at 2015, Let's look at this. If you look at 2015, um, come on, this one. I think it's one. All right, it's acting weird, but if you look at this period here, all right, you can see we had a nice rally year in 15. We based out in 16, and in 2017 we had another strong year. Very similar to how it looks like we could be setting up. Um, going into this upcoming year, All right? Nice rally last year, basing out this year. Um, now, even when we go to a, let's go to a, let's go to a monthly. Even if you look at the monthly, we got a nice, We got a nice ascending triangle here that looks like we could be getting ready to break out. Right. But some news did come out today about antitrust. Um, 
antitrust problems related to their uh, cloud business. So that's definitely something to watch because that's a huge part of their revenue. But you can see here, we have a nice ascending triangle pattern uh, forming here on Amazon um, that could be you know, signaling a breakout soon going into the new year. So just something to watch, um, especially with XLY pulling back into you know, that buying territory. You know, could could be a nice setup. All right, Norbert, what you talking about? Can you can you, uh, can you elaborate, brother? Uh, pattern uh pattern record just pattern recognition bias, of course, things can change, but uh. If you look at A and B from the week of one one eleven to to five ten, um, you know that looks like a pretty similar pattern um, on Amazon. And even if you look at Nef, well, we go after after you look at that from uh, oh, one, so week of one eleven. Uh, uh, this year, yeah, this year. Oh, before yeah, even like all right. So before we get to that, I just noticed this too. Similar pattern here. Um, similar you know, ascending triangle here back in 2020, right? Boom. Boom. So similar pattern, you see that ascending triangle hitting resistance, price action getting tighter, then we break out, right? But then you're saying go to one, 111. Yeah, between the, the, uh, the date of 111 and, and 510, 111 and 510. 510 will be uh, the low of this year. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the falling wedge? Yes. Yeah, so, so, that type of, uh, it's like a inverse head and shoulders type of look. If you look after 511 to 712, <clears throat> a similar pattern. Um, Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Similar pattern that happened on A and B, uh, Netflix, uh, Nvidia, um, Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Right, we got that inverse head and shoulders right there, and that strong move, breakout, retest. You know, coming down to that twenty EMA. And then another strong move. And then you're saying on on um okay on Amazon, you got that same pattern here. Boom. Um, that inverse, that inverse head and shoulders. Yes, sir. So definitely, you know. This could be a you know a strong breakout for Amazon. Um, yeah. Over these the, next the bigger the, the bigger the base, bigger the breakout. So. The bigger the base, the bigger the breakout. And we got a yearly base. A yearly a yearly base. So, uh, you know we could see you know we could see a strong move. We could see four thousand by this upcoming year. Um, there's definitely some things they have to, you know, uh, address, but, you know, they're forming a monopoly almost, you know, Amazon, I think, um, you know, all the moves that they're making, they're producing their own TVs, they producing their own tablets, you know, they got to deal with Rivian. So that might increase margins, you know, uh, as far as deliveries goes. Um, so. Yeah, we could see a, definitely see a strong move here in Amazon this upcoming year. Any questions, comments, concerns? Tomorrow's a short day. I uh, believe close at two o'clock. Um, ES, we're on, we're on break right now. 
on that one hour break from five to six p.m. But let's see, let's see if my thesis plays out. We can close above forty-seven oh five um, tomorrow. That would be only about. That will only be about 15 points, 15 points, about uh, 32 basis points uh, percentage increase. I think that's possible. I think that's possible. You know, it kind of broke this ascending triangle Monday, you know, the, you know, the um, GDP downgrade from Goldman and the, the variant where he's kind of Kind of broke my ascending triangle pattern, but you can see it kind of quickly bounced back. But I think you know, I think I think we're still on target. You can see we're getting we're getting tighter here. We're getting tighter up here. So I think we can see forty eight hundred real soon. What's up, Aki? Um, Microsoft. Um, we got a supply zone. Um. At 339.03 and 336.63. I, I, I think we can break through it. Um, we got two to continuation. Um, but we also got a gap at 339.4. But I'm, I'm leaning more towards this 337. Yeah. We still got a gap too around 312 that never got filled. You know, down here. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's still a gap up to 339 that needs to get filled. Uh, we, we are in a daily supply right now. As you can see, you know, we've kind of been cutting through that supply. Wasn't really any strong reaction from sellers today. Uh, wasn't really that much sell pressure um, as, you know, price cut through the supply. But you can see, you know, this is a very, you know, key level around this 333, you see support and resistance. But yeah, you know, this stuff. Also that supply zone has been there since um, November the 5th. So I, I think we do break it through it. Right. Let's go so, to the four hour. Yeah, and we got some supply on the four hour around, yeah, just like you said, around that 339. So that's something to watch too. That's something to watch. Let's, let me throw the IV on here real quick. Mm, IV, IV looking really low. So we'll see how it reacts to supply. That might be a great put opportunity, depending on how it reacts. But the market seems pretty strong right now. So I wouldn't really be looking to put anything um, unless you have confirmation. Because um, you always want to judge your trades kind of off how the overall market is flowing to in the indexes. Because if QQQ is rallying up, if the NASDAQ is rallying up, I'm not really looking to play puts on tech unless it makes sense. All right, so definitely use those indexes as a gauge. And then also just be patient and wait for those entries. And take advantage. I know a lot of us, you know, a lot of y'all might may hesitate when price, you know, look at bounce off this 100. So beautiful with the bullish engulfing. So let me, let me see if I could walk y'all through my trade that I'm in, right? So when well, on Monday, when the spy came down and tested the one, the 100, you know, what you could have been looking for was, you know, we based out here at a strong move, right? This is called a uh, impulse move, right? An impulse move off the key level, right? You see this cup and handle. So, you know, if you're less risk averse, you don't want to enter off the impulse move. You want to wait for the retest, right? Um, so what I did was once it bounced off the 100 day, I believe I was patient. And then once we got this bullish engulfing on the 15th, that's when I myself entered. 
um, the spy, right? Uh, that was my confirmation. And I always talk about these bullish and gold candles because that lets you know who's in control. Right? You know, this was an indication to me that buyers were in control. And then you can see we kind of, you know, rally for the rest of the day. And then on Tuesday and then and today. I do, uh, I do want to bring something up as well. Um, I too, I, I too am in a secret uh, S and P call, but um, so typically this is like in terms of market structure. Um, whenever you see something, you know, like it's a base out like that, um, and whenever something makes a short term um, higher high and it breaks structure, so you can see right there we're bouncing around like that four fifty one ish, and then you know it moved up. And then you see the first uh, high right there and it broke structure. So that right there um, sometimes can give you an indication that the market wants to move higher because what it does, it breaks, um, it makes a higher high and it breaks structure. If you look to the left, it broke, uh, it broke from that um, high right there. Uh, you can move down a little bit more. Are you saying this structure here, right? Uh, now you see where, uh, you see where the, um, the top, of that trend line is by the bearish engulfing. Wait, to here? the left. To the left. Keep oh, here? Uh, yeah, around there. So we can see that that was, uh, that was the last, um, that was the high uh, that it broke. So that was a structure that it broke right there. So this is a common pattern you'll see within um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of equities or indexes, et cetera, whatever you're trading with. Whenever prices, uh, you know, find some buyers, it'll have an impulse move, like you said, and then uh, it'll break structure. So it broke the structure right there and made a high. And then it came down and it retested uh, that area um, where it made like a higher, a higher low. And then uh, that's where price, um, you know, took off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's something you can look for when it bases out, goes up and breaks a short term high and it comes back in retest exactly exactly um and then you can see here this level where this uh what was this the 15 this 15 minute supply was created you can see we broke above came back and then that level turned into our new support right. so you can see you know supply here boom tested it, came back down, broke above it, came back, tested it again, and then turn it to our new support. But like I said, use those EMAs too, right? If you're less risk averse, you know, wait until the EMAs cross, right? You can see we crossed um, right around this level when we came back to retest. You see that, 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 that blue line, that nine cross right above 20. And, you know, uh, we continue to move back up. But you know, just something to add to the toolbox. But we'll see tomorrow. You know, if we uh, close at all-time highs, I think supply should be a little bit more weaker now. But we still might get some selling. <clears throat> we still might get some selling and supply. You know, this supply is still valid. You know, this supply has not been invalidated yet because we have not closed above it. We did peak above it last week, but then we started to sell back off. We actually, let's go to a smaller time frame. Let's go to the three. I want to see if there's a smaller, if there's a smaller time frame supply that we may have to work with. There, there is one um, on the one hour. Um, it's 4740.5 and uh 4731.75. Okay, right here. Um, yeah, so this 4703, you know, that's gonna be a um a level tomorrow to watch on ES. We got our one hour supply there. But as long as we can hold above, I believe 4705 which was our close of December 10th, which was our close all-time high. Yeah, 4704.75, um, you know, that'll put us at an all-time high close. So 
We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is a short day. Might be low, might be low volume. You know, as people are you know traveling for the holidays and things like that. Um, so just be careful. You know, low volume isn't good for options. You know, low volatility isn't good. We need volatility uh, for options. So just be careful. So see if the ES can close below the 200 day. That's going to be a great sign going in next week. All right. And if you guys haven't oh. subscribed yet to TMG, the mastermind group, um, my, uh, Lori, who is the queen of TOS, is like doing a master class. So make sure you start subscribing now. Because I said, what time is it, MJ? Six o'clock? Uh, the master class tonight is at 8 p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, subscribe yeah. before you do that. Yeah, the master class tonight is at 8 p.m. Um, I'll drop the link in the chat here in a second. Just lost my train of thought, but uh, let me drop that link in here. Oh, so yeah, somebody said, all right, so the market is actually open all day tomorrow. My mistake, the bond bond market closes at two. Still might, still probably will be low volatility. Um, so just be careful. We might get a we might get a strong move on the indexes, but you might see that that volume drop off. Right. Um, but yeah, you know we'll be back on tomorrow four o'clock. Um, you know, make sure you uh, you know start your free trial for the mastermind group. We got another economics class coming up in January. You know, um, so want to be a part of that curriculum. You know, definitely tap in um yeah so you just click choose plan and then you can start your free trial uh, for the subscription all right um, but yeah everybody have a great night see y'all tomorrow follow me on instagram mj the mastermind follow the mastermind group llc on instagram as well see y'all tomorrow peace and abundance